Hi, Rama. It's week 19, day three of our Bible narrative reading plan. Today we're in 1 Samuel 26 and 27. We see at the beginning of 26 that these neighbors, the Ziphites, they are back at it again. They are not happy that David is around. And so yet again, they go to Saul and say, look, we know where he is. We'll tell you where he is. And so yet again, we have this, this meeting where David has opportunity to kill Saul. In the middle of the night, David and one man, Abishai, they go into the encampment of the enemy. They go, they see Saul sleeping there on the ground. And Abishai, this man, he says, look, David, God has given the enemy into your hand. Please let me pin him to the earth with one stroke of the spear, and I will not, will not strike him twice. This man, Abishai, is eager. He's ready to take the life of Saul. He's ready uh, to get rid of David's enemies. But David says yet again, do not destroy him, for who can put out his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? Hear what David says. He says, the Lord forbid that I should put out my hand against the Lord's anointed. Uh, he says later on, he talks about all the different ways that Saul might die. He says, but I'm not going to be the one to do it. And so uh, David actually takes the spear and the jar of water from Saul's head, and then they go away. And then later on, after they're safely away, they're at a great distance, David starts calling out to the general. He calls out to Abner, and Abner arouses, who is this man? Who's calling out here? And David, um, he starts speaking not just to Abner, but to the whole army there in verse 16, because all these yous are in the plural. And so he says, uh, basically, you guys are not doing your job. Um, somebody could have come in there and killed your king tonight, and you have not taken care of him. And Saul, uh, David says to him, see where the king's spear is and where the jar of water that was at his head. And Saul recognizes David's voice, and so um, Saul realizes again what has happened, that David could have killed him, and he doesn't kill him. And so we see again that this false repentance, or certainly an incomplete repentance from Saul. Verse 21, where he says, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will no, I will no more do you harm, because my life was precious in your eyes this day. Behold, I have acted foolishly, and I have made a great mis mistake. So yet again, Saul says, look, I I'm sorry, David. I don't know what I'm thinking. You, you have been so kind to me. You haven't killed me. I'm not going to do you any harm. And uh, the, the chapter ends, verse 25. It says, then Saul said to David, blessed be you, my son, David. You will do many things and will succeed in them. So you, you hear this sound of reconciliation, but we've heard this before. We know that Saul was insincere. And so David goes his way. He does not return with Saul. And David is still afraid because we see at the beginning of chapter 27, he says, I'm going to die one day by the hand of Saul. So there's nothing better for me to do than to go to the land of the Philistines. He feels like he is now in exile. He's not welcome anywhere in the land of Israel. If he's there, then Saul is going to continue to pursue him. So even though that means he's going to have to go away from the worship of Yahweh, and that's what he's saying up there in verse 19 of chapter 26, he says, I've got to go to the land of the Philistines. Now, whether David is right or wrong in this, um, this attitude, uh, we'll have to leave for a later discussion. But that's the way he feels. And so he goes back to where he's been before, back to the land of the Philistines. He secures a piece of land for he and his men, which I think is really to get him away from the capital, to get away from, uh, from scrutiny so that he can be out there um, in, in private and be able to, to live safely. But you see these raids that David is making on the land, and at first you might think, well, what is he doing? This sounds kind of like a, a mean thing to do. But he's actually raiding the enemies of Israel. And so he's being like a king. He's going and protecting his people. And, but he's doing it in such a way that uh, Achish, the ruler of the Philistines, thinks that, uh, that David is making himself a stench to his people Israel. That's what he says at the end of chapter 27. So David is in a very precarious situation where he's, working to help Israel, but he's not living in Israel, and he appears to be helping the Philistines, but he's trying to do everything he can to not actually uh, go for the Philistines against Israel, and we're going to see all of this come to, to a head in just a few chapters. But God is continuing to protect David, continuing to lead him to the throne, even though this seems to be quite the unlikely path. Here's a summary of today's reading. For more information, go to 
tunemyheart.org.